I thought you said you were making another video for a while. True, but then I did my morning routine of reading comments. Boy oh boy, you guys are amazing. If Inner Voice has anything to say about this, I'm blaming you. Since most of you are new to the channel via the DC20 community, seriously, I love you guys. That means that 99% of you nine, 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 nine. have not seen my other stuff, which is fine by the way, it gets cringy. So now that I'm a little better at editing and scripting, I want to take a stab at redoing the Notion video since it's been a while and my workflow has changed somewhat since then. Here we go. Notion.so is a note keeping and organization app. It's on the web. I use it in a browser window or phone, tablet, or desktop. I now use Notion for many elements of my life, but I first found it for DMing. So let's get into how I use Notion for D&D. Oh no, 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 when I say D&D, I refer to the nerd ritual of gathering around a table with friends, not a particular product. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting a sandwich. You want anything? Oh yeah, tuna please. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a blank Notions page. Here's our blank page. What I'm going to do is start us off with some categories. Past, present, previous, and provisions. These are basic categories that should cover most general situations. I navigate a lot with a keyboard, but you can typically use clickable options too. Start with a slash and h3. You'll notice that the slash brings up your options of things you can put on your page. These are called blocks. Think of them as digital Legos that let you build anything you want with them. H3 is heading, and we'll type our first section, present, here. You can click on H3 or just hit the enter button after typing the H3. That will set this block to whatever selection you picked. Now hit enter. Now enter slash div for divider and hit enter again. So repeat this three more times for your main sections. Also, don't forget to title your page and give it a color. Visuals are your best friend as a DM. A single image in a split second can tell you all you need to know, remember, set the mood, or remind you. It's incredible the brain's ability to respond to art as opposed to words. Remember when Coach said that art was so important in TRPGs? Art is a setting ground. It's a communication device, an info dump. To this fantasy that you're building. Whatever tool you use, don't overlook the power of having and organizing images. Here we're going to create a campaign. Type page. Now on the new page, type the name and give your campaign art and an icon. Under that, we're going to type slash and button. So here, we're going to name our button, and below, we're going to tell it what we want it to do when we click on it. Let's choose New Page. This will open up a new page, and if you're following, now we're three pages deep. Here's where I put the Lazy DM template from Sly Flourish's book. I can't speak enough about how this book changed my game. In fact, it's because of something like this that I can just swap from 5e to DC20 with basically no problem or interruption. It's because it's system agnostic. Now we head back out and we have our new episode button. For our next session, we just click this and poof, there you go. Warning. To anyone new to DMing or struggling with notes, disclaimer, message, call out, thingy. Don't overthink it. Pick a template, example, strategy, and just do it exactly. Don't fret about it, just do it as it is. Then, after a session of using said strategy, bullet point a few issues you had, then input what your solution would be. Repeat. This is my tried and true method for actually getting systems into place. Systems at work, systems in my life, digital systems, analog systems, house systems, mental systems. It's called iterative design. Iterative design just means to do a thing regardless if it's the perfect way or not. Find out what specifically you don't like about it, tweak those things, and leave alone the things that work, and then run it again. And essentially, you're whittling down, whittling down, whittling down until you have the best system for you. 
The template here is the heart of how this all works. It makes things so easy. No joke, one time it was game day and I was at a family breakfast where my husband was doing all the talking and I was just kind of hanging out. So I legit pulled out my phone and just started filling out the template and doing D&D prep right there in the restaurant. To go back or navigate, use the crumbs at the top of the screen or the home button on your phone. Now that we have our button and episode there, to the right, we'll put a campaign image. Type slash and then image or click image. Now, upload or use the built-in use splash to find an image you like. Don't worry, you can totally change it later. Notion's blocks have these little dots that let you click on them and drag them around. So nothing you do here is permanent really, and it's easy to maneuver things. Use the blue line to know where in the sequence your block will end up at. If your block ends up in the wrong spot, don't panic. Just tap and hold or click the three dots to move them around. While you can sort of do this on a phone, I'd recommend doing it on a computer for setup. Notion has great phone and tablet apps that work well, but there are some things that are just plain easier in the website or desktop version. Now that we have this, we're good, basically. If we go back out of page using the crumbs, we can add another campaign if we wish. The provisions part I'll get to in my next video, as there's quite a bit there and it's changed a lot since the last time I made a video. Though the old way is still totally viable if you want to check it out, but I'll be doing another upcoming video about my current workflow. And that's the basics basics of it. If I want to add extras, I just type slash page. Now, one tidbit about the monsters. So what I do is for 5e, when I was running that, I would just open a new tab browser and find the stat block I like. Windows Shift S gives you the screenshot. Grab that block and just control V or paste it right into the notions page. Done. Do this for whatever monsters you want. And that's it. For digital navigation, you can use the sidebar and bounce between your headings. However, what I prefer to do is to print it. The easiest way to do that is actually from a phone or tablet. So from a phone, just tap the three dots, tap export. Then on the next screen, hit the share button and print. This is an example from my notes from the table. See, what I like to do is I like to print my notes and then do all of my table session notes in pen over the top. This for me has just been the best balance. If you do this from a desktop, you have to export it as a PDF, then open a zip file out of your downloads folder and then print. And to me, that's just a few too many extra steps. It's possible, but I just use my phone. The best part about this is the monster stats are just right there and the bullets can be crossed off or crossed out and the white space is just doodle central or combat notes or what have you. For me, this provides the best table experience combined with the power of digital formats for building that prep sheet. I like having physical paper at the table. It's the least distracting and I can free up a tablet or phone to run music or occasionally look up rules. However, if you are running a laptop as your DM screen or such, you can just go to the end of the notes, do slash divider and put your notes below there. A dash and a space will automatically make a bullet. A tab will make sub bullets. Shift tab backwards indent. Perfect for fast notes that you can reference later. Now, another thing I like to do is put fun extras like lore and tidbits. We can put another divider here on our campaign page. We can put anything extra here, lore notes from whatever we want. I put a page here that is a summarization of the setting. What's cool about pages is that they can go as deep as you want. If we go in here, right here, I use the at symbol to refer to other pages I've already written. Here, I mention a town in a bullet point that actually is more explored in a one-off session. So I use the at symbol and then type the episode name and it pops up. Now I can just navigate straight there. And if I want to go back, you can just click the back link and go back to the page you were on or any other page that that page is linked to. If you wanted to, you could also insert a new at reference to go back to the page you were on. 
Doing this after a while gives you a sort of wiki style navigation system where you can bounce around all over the place in your Notions notes. Once I've had a session, I have the option of using my phone's camera to upload a picture of the notes with the handwritten bits. Now on my campaign page, you may have noticed that I have these tables to track NPCs they've met and leads, or basically quest hooks. I like to have these at the top of my page to see every time as reminders, and I can find ways to work them in. Example, when I made San and Chippy here, it was entirely a Star Wars ripoff fun times. However, with one other development we've recently had, I found this funny little way to not only bring San back, but now he'll have a real story and an impact on the world. And part of that happened because every time I open my page, I see his name there and I remember that here's a character I could do more with. Thank you guys. I hope you found this enjoyable and helpful. Next up will be the video talking about the provision section and databases. There's a lot to cover there, so I wanted to break it up into separate sections. I hope you liked it and until next time. Bye.